What's going on people? Before I get this video started, I just want to invite you guys to go to Mood D Control. That's a video I created a while ago. And from this point forward, that's where the bulk of my videos will be uploaded to. Okay, so I'm not going to really be uploading to Fearless 2005 or Fearless Grunt. Um, every now and then I may put videos on there, but my main channel is now going to be Mood D Control. Now, I'm going to put a link to that channel on the bottom, and if you guys feel, you can feel free to go and subscribe there if you want to. Um, if you don't want to, then so be it. God bless you anyway, right? But Mood D Control is going to be the channel that I will be uploading to from this point forward, okay? I'm only uploading this video on Fearless 2005 just to put the information out there. So anyone who uh, don't see, who don't see this video and not aware of the other channel, Mood D Control, and you're just not gonna see any more videos being uploaded to Fearless 2005, you're gonna be like, well, Fearless Fearless, we haven't seen any more videos. Well, because of the fact that um, on my other channel, Mood D Control, every now and then I may put a video on Fearless 2005, but the bulk of my videos and even live stream, I'm gonna start live streaming on Mood D Control. So that's where my videos will be uploaded to. Mood D Control, I'm putting the link on the bottom. Now, on that channel also, when you go there, there's a video that I uploaded last week that's titled The Ignorance of Freemasonry. Okay, so if you're interested in that stuff, then that video is on Mood D Control, The Ignorance of Freemasonry. Okay, but go to Mood D Control, subscribe. Uh, but this article had to comment on this. Now, this is this is an incident that took place back in 1997, I believe, okay? And you see the title, Man Who Brutally Raped and Killed Seven-Year-Old Black Girl in Casino Bathroom Seeks Parole, writes pathetic apology letter to girl's family. Now, if you notice in the title, it says, Man Who Brutally Raped and Killed Seven-Year-Old Black Girl. Why didn't they just say white man who brutally raped and killed seven-year-old black girl? Because they got the image there, right? Was it really necessary for them to put black girl in the article and not put white man who brutally raped and killed? See, this is where brainwashing comes in. Media brainwashing. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that to white man who brutally raped and killed seven-year-old black girl. I'm going to put white man since they put black girl in there and then they got the photo down there. Now, you see this dude right here. Now, my question is, why is he still alive? And I'm going to read the article and show you. I'm going to also put the article in the bottom and you guys could go check it out for yourself. But why is this dude still alive? Look at this cute little girl, man, right? Now, when I read this article, there's like questions that automatically popped up in my head. And I'm sure that as I read this article, questions are also gonna pop up in your head, right? So here we go. A California man who brutally raped and choked a seven-year-old black girl to death inside a casino bathroom stall is asking for mercy to be released from prison early despite having no parole reports the Atlantic Star the Atlantic Black Star now my first question is why was this 7 year old girl at a casino in the first place now I recall when I took my son, my son was like 17 years old and I took him to the casino with me one time. They wouldn't even allow him in the casino because he was underage. You had to be 21 years old to come into the casino. Now maybe 
Things have changed since 1997. But my sons were not allowed in the casino at 17 years old. So why was this young girl at a casino at seven years old in a casino bathroom by herself? Where were the parents? Where were the parents that this seven-year-old girl was in a bathroom in a casino by herself being raped and choked to death? Now, also, was this in the girl's bathroom or was it in the men's bathroom? Because if it's in the female's bathroom, you mean to tell me as busy as a casino is, especially in California, no other woman was in that bathroom to hear that young girl screaming or scuffling or whatever was going on. No one was in that bathroom at the casino to save this young girl from being raped and choked to death. But again, where were the parents? Okay, so I'm sure some of y'all, when you first read that, that was the first question came to your mind. Why, why was this seven-year-old girl in a bathroom stall at a casino by herself? And even if the parents were outside the casino, outside the bathroom door, didn't you see that man going inside? Or was that man already in there waiting for someone to come in there? You let your seven-year-old daughter go inside a casino bathroom by herself. And no one was there to rescue it or to help this girl. She had no protection. Where were the parents? Jeremy Strawmeyer was 18 when he accosted Sharice Iverson in a Las Vegas casino in 1997 by raping her and then murdering her inside a bathroom stall. Strawmeyer avoided the death penalty by admitting guilt and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Now, at age 39, his attorney wants the court to reconsider his case, arguing that his brain was undeveloped at the time of the ruthless killing, but that doesn't sit well with the detective who investigated the case. Now, this is a good example of this white dude trying to utilize his, his white privilege. He writes a letter and, and he writes a letter to the family and now he's asking to get out. Why is this dude still alive at 39? Even if he didn't get the death penalty, why are these so-called black conscious folk, the Nation of Islam, and all these other little black groups or gangs that's in the prison system, why did they allow this dude to continue living? Why is he still alive? This is 2018 and this dude is still alive in prison. Why did they let him live knowing what he did to this little girl? I'm just surprised he's still alive that he wasn't put to death in, in prison by black groups or any type of group man that says, okay, is this what you did to a seven-year-old girl inside a, 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 a casino bathroom stall? Why is this dude still alive? And he's got a lot of gall, man, a lot of gall. Now they're trying to play the psychological cricket. But you remember Bill Cosby? They wouldn't let that go. But yet this dude, he brutally raped and choked this seven-year-old girl to death, and now he's asking for mercy. Why is he still alive? The innocent victim, the uh, brutality of the murder, and the cavalier attitude of the killer, retired Metro detective Phil Ramos recall of the incident. I still remember taking the confession from him, and he described and he described in brutal detail how he molested little Sharice. Ozzy Fumo believes that Strohmeyer should be re-sentenced. He argues 
that his tumult tumultuous childhood, his mother's mental illness, and being up for adoption contributed to the killer's mental state. Ramos contested the claim. He was not immature, he said of Strawmeyer. He's a cold-blooded killer and he should have been put to death for his crime. Amen. Strawmeyer wrote a letter to Iverson's family and apologized for the vicious crime. Now, an apology is not going to bring the little Sharice back. An apology is not going to take away the thoughts of what happened to this seven-year-old daughter in that casino bathroom stall where she was viciously choked and raped to death. It's not going to take that. It's not going to make things right. So he could apologize all he want, man. This dude deserved death. Why is he still alive? Then he says, I want to ask for their forgiveness. And I want them to know I'd give anything to trade places with Sharice. It's too late now. See, people say things like that to make you think that they're sorry. But you can't trade places with her. This happened back in 2000, I mean, uh, 1997. This is 2018. You took her life away from her, man. You took opportunities away from her. So he should not only rot in jail, but he should be viciously raped and put to death inside those prison walls. Why are the so-called black conscious community in the prison system allowing this dude to continue to live? They kill each other. So why is this dude still alive? I don't know, man. This this stuff, it happened back in 1997, but when I read stuff like this, and I think I slightly remember this incident that took place back then, man. You know, it says, Schoenmeyer wrote in a letter to Las Vegas Review Journal last year, I just want them to know I'm sorry, more sorry than words can ever say. I wish nothing but peace and good lives for them, wherein their lives are not defined by this horrible tragedy as mine has been. What? Let me read that again. I wish nothing but peace and good lives for them, wherein their lives are not defined by his hor by this horrible tragedy. Yes, their, their lives are defined by that because now you ripped a seven-year-old child out of their lives. They can never forget her. You can never, there's no words that you can ever say that will replace this seven-year-old daughter that was viciously molested, raped, and choked to death in that bathroom stall. In a bathroom stall. But again, where were the parents? Where were the parents? A judge is expected to review the case in the next three months. Now, I'm, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch this case and see what this judge do, man, because this dude should be resentenced and he should be put to death. He should not even be able to reach. He's got three months. They have three months in the prison system to put him to death. There's no way that he should continue living. So you guys, I'm going to put the article in the bottom. You guys feedback and tell me what you think about this. This is crazy. And this is this is not the first time it happened. It's not going to be the last time it's happened. Because every time we now, you know, turn on the news, we're hearing about some child's life being taken, where even the mothers are taking their child's lives. The fathers are taking their child's lives. Children are being left alone by themselves for the wolf to devour them to rape them, to destroy them. Children are coming up missing, and it's the parents' fault. See, I'm overprotective. I had two boys, two sons, and I was extremely, people used to tell me how I was overprotective of them, right? I wouldn't let them out of my sight, you know? But that's what parents are supposed to do, not just fathers, but parents are supposed to protect their children. See. My little granddaughter, I do not let her out of my sight. Now, when she's with her mother and her father, I always ask, 
Where's Lil' Cam at? You know? So it's like, where is she? I want to know where she is. I, I go up to the school to check on her during the daytime. You know, sometimes I'll just pop up at the school, peeking at the door. Her teachers know who I am, right? I already left my mark on that school. They know who I am. So I'll make a surprise appearance. That's just how I am. See, so I feel bad for this family. There's nothing that can replace this young girl in their lives, man. It's, it's, they, this is going to be a scar that's going to be forever on their hearts, man. But again, where were they when their daughter was being choked and raped to death by this pervert? Where were they? So the article's on the bottom. Feedback. Tell me what you think. Uh, go to Move D Control and subscribe. I'm going to put that channel link on the bottom. Till next time, I'm fearless.